What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we're talking about Scream 7 in this video here again today. This is going to be me kind of recapping more in-depthly what I want to see from Ghostface as a motive in Scream 7. Something I wouldn't mind seeing. I don't necessarily think this is the direction that they will take everything in, but I would love to see something like this as a way to kind of once again abandon something being carried mostly by revenge or I want to be famous or something else that we've already seen in the past that has always managed to be done in a very compelling way but I know a lot of people are tired of those same old motive types. So Ghostface's goal in Scream 7 in my mind could be about sending a message to Hollywood like I've addressed several times in previous videos. In between the events of 6 and 7, we would have had a true crime s show based on the Woodsboro murders, several scrapped attempts to revive Stab, etc. However, those responsible for the Stab series will once again have a revival in the works during my vision for Scream 7, and this is the opportunity our killer has been waiting for. Even this proposed revival is in doubt because of the recent sprees from 5 and 6. So our new killer hopes that a newly orchestrated spree that targets all survivors will persuade those in charge to can the revival while also discontinuing anything related to Ghostface or the Woodsboro murders as a whole. See, this person in my head is from Woodsboro. They have always hated the Stab series. And they have a very strong opinion about these kind of exploit exploitative movies to begin with. They aren't into shows like Dahmer or anything about Bundy, Manson, you name it. They hate it. Anything about true crime, they're against it. Forcing victims to potentially relive their trauma is something that they are firmly against. So, of course, they also hate people like Gail Weathers. This person, who I still wouldn't mind being Leslie Mocker, it can be anybody, also recently learned that Christina Carpenter knew what Billy and Stu were up to and did nothing to stop them for her own selfish reasons back in 96. And she even knew what they were up to, like I've stated before in my channel, what they were doing in regards to Maureen Prescott and Cotton Weary. So in their mind, Christina is just as guilty as Hollywood. Hollywood, Gail Weathers, the media in general all exploit the material and Christina Silence is the supplier of this material in our killer's mind. If she had spoken up, then none of this would have occurred. Sure, there's a chance Billy and Stu's efforts would have been remembered, but it wouldn't have become this phenomenon that our killer is tired of. But sending a message to Hollywood that Stab and Ghostface projects need to die isn't enough. Because as long as our survivors are around, there's a chance for a new source material to occur and this could be our way of referencing Richie and Amber since this killer is basically an inverse to them. The killer believes that if every survivor is gone then it should be more than enough to prevent someone else from wanting revenge or trying to get famous. So in my mind there's even bits of dialogue where the killer is referencing past motives. Uh, Keep in mind that I've included bits here that acknowledge why the killer would think that becoming the thing it hates is a wise decision. Keep it because because remember the events of five and six, they are already causing doubts about this new stab revival that's reported to be in the works. We'll learn that in Scream 7. So our new killer wants to seal that doubt with a brand new spree. They view themselves as a hero killing for the greater good. They don't think that our survivors have that, that have lasted this long deserve the lives that they have. They think those lives are entitled to the ones that unfortunately are in the shadows suffering that no one really knows about. But the survivors do nothing but profit off of this time and time and again. Although they say this to be a they say these are traumatic times from their lives. They always like to exploit them and profit off of them in our killer's perspective. These people just don't deserve to have the lives that they have. So in the killer's mind, eliminating any and all loose threads. And because they have such an opinionated stance on true crime and stab and being from Woodsboro, they think that what they are doing is going to be a good act. And everybody else that they are targeting is in the wrong. Uh, that is my perspective on Scream 7. I know a lot of people would rather see something more off the rails, I like to call it, in terms of having a killer who is just doing it just because, or even bringing back Stu Mocker. You can get, you can bring back Stu Mocker. I just don't know why he has to be alive. That's the only thing I still don't know. And I've stated it many times. I wouldn't mind necessarily seeing Stu Mocker once again if you could bring him back being alive in a logical way but because so much time has passed 
there's logic gap after logic gap after logic gap after logic gap. It's just piling up. The more I try to fit him in, then I'm like, you know, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. And it's I don't think it's a very good angle to take. Well, you know, they did this in six. That doesn't make sense. So they might as well do this in seven. No, they might as well. Here, here's what they should do. If they did something in six that didn't make sense, they might as well clean up their act and start doing things that make sense. They shouldn't just go a step further and do more stuff that makes no sense. That's not that's not good logic. But you guys, let me know what you think about a, a concept like that for Ghostface down in the comment section below. Or if you want a more revenge driven narrative, you can throw in revenge into the mix. Still with the ultimate goal being sending a message to Hollywood and putting it into stab and all things ghost, Ghostface exploitations once and for all. Uh, like I said before, this person could be Leslie Mocker and that Leslie Mocker individual who we know is related to Stu Mocker. That could be where you throw in the dosage of revenge. Someone who wants payback because she lost her son Vince because of how her life has gone ever since the events in 96 with her younger brother, etc. How it impacted her parents, how it impacted her adult life, how it impacted her failed marriages, all of this stuff that she kind of blames as far as her own life failure. She blames it on the Woodsboro murders and blames it on the survivors. Uh, and also, again, in our killer's perspective, from our killer's perspective, if our survivors had died when these other killers had initially tried to kill them, we wouldn't have so many new entries in the staff franchise. Thus, they think that by successively doing what the others had not, this should be enough to stop everything. Hollywood will decide to pull the, pull the plug on this supposed revival that's in the work to the staff franchise and to take it one step further, anything and all things related to Ghostface will be discontinued. Now, of course, in my mind, my movie would end in that capacity, very much so a callback to Jill Roberts. Everything with Ghostface is discontinued. The staff franchise is officially shelved. Any and all Ghostface titles or any projects related to Ghostface are canned. But of course, our killer will be dead and they won't be alive to see that their goal was a success. You guys, let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you can never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.